but we're gonna look at probably the simplest application of Gauss's law for an electric field. We're gonna apply Gauss's law to just a single point charge and see what that tells us. The point charge is spherically symmetric, so it uh, doesn't matter what the orientation of the charge is. So the Gaussian surface that we want to use should share that same symmetry. So the Gaussian surface is going to be the sphere. So it doesn't have any preferred direction or orientation, and it's a sphere that is centered on the point charge. So I'll take that to be my Gaussian surface. You know, we think about what the electric field lines from this point charge are going to look like. Well, every point on the sphere is going to be an equal distance away from the point charge. So the electric field has to have a constant value all along that surface. Because otherwise it would have, um, you'd be saying it would be stronger here on one side than on the other. And that's not possible. It's the same distance away from the point charge all along the surface. And by the same uh, sort of argument, we think about how electric field lines are going to have to be oriented. Uh, just drawing one of the electric field lines here. It is going to have to intersect my sphere at a right angle. So perpendicular. It doesn't have any reason to tilt one way or the other. Uh, out of those two possible directions, so in or out of the page, or up or down the page. So the electric field is going to have to intersect my Gaussian surface at a right angle. And we know this is a, a positive electrical charge, so electric field lines are going to point radially away from it. If it were a negative point charge, I just reverse the direction of this arrow so the electric field lines point in towards it. So what Gauss's law has to tell us about this arrangement of my one point charge is that I add up the flux of the electric field. So that's um, the perpendicular component of the electric field added up all over the surface of my sphere. That is going to have to equal the charge enclosed by the sphere divided by the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught. For the flux of the electric field, the electric field is going to point radially away from my positive point charge and the surface area over the sphere is going to be 4 pi r squared and the outward pointing normal to the surface of the sphere is also going to point in the r hat direction, so in the radial outward direction. So this is going to give me magnitude of the electric field times 4 pi r squared r hat dot r hat and those are parallel to each other, so r hat dot r hat just gives me one. So we have the left hand side from Gauss's law tells us that the flux of the electric field is going to be the electric field magnitude, which we're trying to solve for, 4 pi r squared. On the right hand side of Gauss's law, in this case q enclosed is pretty simple, just q. So put everything together in Gauss's law, we have 4 pi r squared times the magnitude of the electric field is going to equal q over epsilon naught. Rearrange that to solve for the electric field magnitude. It's going to be q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. 
that's the electric field magnitude caused by a point charge Q. Uh, and this is our previous and perhaps more familiar result if we recall that the constant in Coulomb's law, K, that coupling constant, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught by definition. So that's the simplest case using Gauss's law, and it confirms for us what the electric field caused by a point charge is.